Hello everyone and welcome to uh, LCI draft with a actually pretty good first pack. I wouldn't mind first picking the Scythe Claw Raptor or the Water Wind Scout. A very nice first pick, even though it's just a common and other good cards in the pack are of course the Plundering Pirate and the Oaken Siren. Um, staggering size usually quite good in, in the green decks and, and the Roman Throne is um, a card I'm actually considering taking here because while the Waterwind Scout is good, I mean, this is gonna be f a you know, not a fine, it's a better than average four drop, definitely in any deck, thanks to no color requirements. And sometimes you can even get some extra triggered abilities happening. But the thing is that the, the ward 2 actually matters quite a bit here. A 4 4 that w will be expensive to kill via spells is gonna be fine. Uh, the scout and the raptor can be better of course in blue and red decks but I will be flexible now and I'll take the card that will definitely go to my deck no matter how how um, the draft is gonna go here uh, <laughs> well what I'm gonna take here then if I took the scout of course another scout would be the slam pick here easily would be the pick here now that I passed the scout I'm gonna take it now there's of course a couple of these, you know, signpost uncommons, Zoyova and Akawali are both good. I think I would take the Zoyova over the Akawali. Mm. Well, I don't know. There's Wizards of Dread, but I think the decision is between the Waterwind Scout and one of these two color uncommons. And I think, like I just said, I will take the two, two drop over the three drop. Mm. Scout is gonna be big. Most flexible here. Okay, fine. I'll take the scout now. It is one color only, so um, it is gonna be more flexible. Pick. Do I get punished? Well, at least I don't get like another copy of a Zoyova immediately here. Um, actually, this pack is definitely a lot weaker than the previous two. I suppose it's gonna be like a between the iceberg and and the Nautilus. And well, both are fine. Iceberg is better in a deck that has no reasonable number of artifacts, but usually when you are playing blue, you will have the ability to craft this thing quite easily. It's also a kind of a six mana card, and it's pack one, pick three. It could be a bit too early picking expensive cards unless they are like sick bombs, which this is not. So I'm gonna take the Nautilus, which will give me board presence on turn two. All right, weak pack. Let's take the. The two drop here and then I have options between well if I'm taking the white card it's gonna be the vanguard of the rose definitely a nice card and then if I'm not taking a white card it's probably going to be one of the green cards and I don't have any I don't oppose blue green it's actually quite a fun color combination in this um, set I think you can do it in a couple of different ways like focus on explore or focus on like a descent but I guess I'll take the vanguard it is I would say a little better than the these things and blue white is a really good color combination of course so let's hope that is gonna stay open well I mean there's no blue card in here but I have an option to take a black black card now you could take the helping hand I have Actually, I wouldn't mind returning any of these. These are decent enough cards that um, it's it's you know fine to return them. But I could just take the Tithing Blade here and keep the black black color as an option here. I think I'll take that over, over the Helping Hand. If black is going to be open, I want to you know have access to this Tithing Blade. Okay, still no white. Yeah, I have only one white card. There's no reason to force that color if it's not actually gonna work. For blue-black though, there is a both Sage of Days and the Waterlocked Hulk. Um, can be nice descent enablers. Um, which one do I prefer? I think if, I, if I'm just gonna be very heavily in the descent, I still like the Sage of Days more, although this unblockable vehicle can be quite nice with descent 8, but... Hmm. I don't even know about my colors. I might not be black. I have just black, one black card, but it's a fairly weak pack. Um, 
I mean, both of these blue cards go to Descent Tech. I'll just take the Sage of Days right now and see how it goes. Well, there's no black either. <laughs> there is a green card, the Capybara. Of course, there are a couple of blue cards, but I'm not a big fan of those. The Cavalry is not usually good in anything else than blue, uh, red, green. I mean, Child of the Volcano, not the best for drop. I like the Capybara more than the Jade uh, Seed Stones. They is more like a green white uh, card usually. Most, you know, you get most out of this in a green white deck, I would say. I'll take the Capybara now because I'm actually not interested in any of these. And if I, if blue green will be open, the Capybara is a, a pretty fine card to run in that deck. Okay, now I'm getting surprisingly decent cards considering I didn't really get very good stuff in a couple of previous packs. Pirate Hat or either of these white cards are uh, uh, cards worth you know considering. And I do have the Vanguard here. Yeah, I think I'm taking giving the chance to, to the blue white deck now. There is the Ray of Ruin, but I'd rather maybe be blue white than black blue if I can uh, somehow, uh, you know influence that choice and I will by picking the white card when I can. Well in here that's not going to be so great though. Mm. Yeah okay I'll take the staggering size because I think it is just the best card in this pack unless you are caves when this in, in which case this would be the best card in the pack of course. But I'll take this. I really know, don't even know if I'm gonna be necessarily blue here. I mean I have the Waterwind Scout and the Nautilus isn't that amazing, so I could be anything. And now I'm getting packed the Akawali, so that's gonna be the easy pick here. I could be black green. And another Cabibara, Ghost Talker I don't like. I'll take this, maybe I can be black green after all. Uh, there is a good white card though. Uh, but there's a Screaming Phantom, which I think isn't bad in the black green archetype. A flyer in there could be useful. Okay, you know what? I got the Akawali. Let's take the black green, but the uh, white card, of course, would have been pretty decent if I wanted to stick to blue, white, or, or white something. Here, I'll just take the companion. I don't know if I want to play it, but whatever. Uh, don't care about the leap. I'll take the uncommon. All right. Well, there's a Kaitse Lazenist and a Staunch crewmate. There's also Master's Guide Mural. There's a joint of dead to uh so what blue card did I pass? Or white card? I don't even remember, but I took a did I take a screaming phantom over? Oh yeah, it was the hammer, the the equipment, right. Hmm. Well, I mean the best card in the pack is the Kaiche Lazenist. I was kinda excited about getting the to draft the black green deck. And I could take to join the dead and go that route, but I mean, I still have the Waterwind Scout. I could be blue something, I could be blue, black, blue, white, or blue, green. Okay, I'll take the best card. Whatever. Um, another join the dead. There's an Iron Paw Aspirant. There are now some red cards too, but I don't think I'm gonna stick, I'm going to red right now unless I'm getting like a bum rare. Um, so here the question is, am I going to be like blue white and take the aspirant or be black blue and take the join the dead? Um, well, that's really not an easy choice. I like this two up quite a bit in any white deck. But maybe I should be doing something different. I'll take the join the dead. Let's go black blue. I mean for now I might still change that. And then I immediately get a Nikanzil and the Jade Light Spelunker. Well. <laughs> okay, okay. This is actually a quite good pack because there are also multiple white cards. A, 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 you know, mono blue card I wouldn't mind having. And the Death Cap Marionette would be actually very good one in the black and blue deck, but should I consider now a green something, take the Spelunker with the option to maybe pick this uh, when this pack comes back to me. 
or I could just say that I'm going to be blue black now and take the marionette. That's actually a, 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 a possible choice, but I'm still taking the spellanker here. And let's see if the black green <laughs> deck can work. All right. Well, not a great one, great pack for black green, but there is the, another chance which I think I would be taking now. Since I chose not to stick to blue white, I think I'm going to ignore the white now. I, I, I was supposed to, I mean, if I wanted to stick to white, I should have picked the white cards, but now I, will, I could take the Rune Lurker Bat, but then I would miss out on some of the white cards I already passed. I'll take the another chance now, and I think this seems to be a black-green deck now, which is fine, but because in this pack I get the Poison Dart Frog, which I quite like, and it's an easy pick here, so, all right, black-green it is, I suppose. Mm. It could be blue green still because I might get a Nikanzil in pick number 10 or 11 or what I don't recall exactly at what point I saw it but it can come back to me in which case I think I might want to have the KW but then again I don't know I'll just take the hidden nursery or I could take the expensive thing here too I don't want to have too many of these expensive stuff but I want to also have some of these caves okay I'm taking this it will work in in any any of the green combinations I'm gonna have. Wow, that's a pretty late it's quint, but I'm not gonna move to green now. Skullcap snail is not bad, but I think I'll take another cave now. If I'm black green. In the presence of ages. Well it does work with um, the scent. I have a couple of cabibaras. It will also return stuff from your graveyard, but um, it's, it's a two for one in that case. I don't like the brawler at all. I'll take this thing and I think it's going to be black green deck right now. And the explorer's cash isn't the kind of card to run in there. Uh, I could play the bristleback. I don't usually like the seven drop uh, land cyclers, but in a decent deck, there's some additional reason to be running those. I'm actually taking it over the keen collar. And now let's see if I get the Nikanzil. I don't know if it was this pack or the next one that could have the Nikanzil. In here, uh, I'll just take the Scythe or Scythe, I mean. Uh, Boulder is like a sideboard card, but I don't think it's that good. It could be a main deck card in a decent deck though. Okay, fine, let's actually take it. And I don't see a Nikanzil here. So I pretty, um, guess I'm happy I didn't go the blue green. Uh, I don't like the Mikoid though. I, I just take another staggering size and the Wito's Inquisitor isn't great either. Another staggering size and now I just probably want to pick up some creatures. Don't like the Ghost Stalker though. Blow gun. Just taking this random seeker here. I don't think I'm gonna necessarily play it but that was a weak pack. I don't think this is the kind of deck that wants to play the blowgun. All right, uh, just take the treasure, I suppose. I got the six drop. I'm actually quite happy to have that. All right, one more pack. Well, I got a pretty good green card in here. I'm taking the hammer skull. It doesn't even matter if this gets uh, the stun counters regularly. A three mana six six is a great blocker, and sometimes you can just attack. You know. Once every other turn, if you are the aggressor, it's still fine. Six damage in one swing. All right, I'll take that and hoping to get something like an Echo of Dusk uh, when this pack returns to me. Um, dead weight. Easy pick, I would say. Out of these options, yes it is. And I'm going to cut now the other color cards, but let's pick something from here. Okay, the Axe Choice, uh, quit pretty welcome here. I have no four drops other than the throne here, so I'll take that over the three drop options. Cut the okay tithing blade, river herald guide. I guess I can take another tithing blade. How many creatures do I have here? If I cut the other stuff here, uh, there's still some cards I want to be cutting, but it's thirteen and nine. How about the three drops now? One. Two, three. I don't want to play the companion. I'm thinking about the River Herald guide, but I'm also considering the Tithing Blade. It's not great against all the decks, you know, the ones that have one drops and, and you know token generating. 
it's not so great but it can be really good in some other cases i guess i'll take the titan blade i might get you know some three drops it doesn't have to be the, the three one explorer i can get some other three drops and getting something similar to to titan blade is you know less less likely to happen all right here i have a few dinos four so i can get a life with this at some point but then again i like to explore if i'm gonna play and i think i will be playing the stuff like the capybaras and i have this pretty good reason to get some decent stuff going on so i'm gonna take the uh, explore thing because that might give you some uh, decent boosts when you build a card you see and don't want to draw it yeah it's fine and uh, i have only two caves so i don't think the leech is really what i want to do it Want to be doing how about the skull taker i have a few ways to maybe get those doesn't trigger so I, I should maybe consider this if i had like four caves i think the lead is then easier to pick but it's a little bit too expensive now and i have a, some expensive stuff here already so i'll take the skull taker and here i can take the mindshaft spider which is actually the kind of wardrobe i was looking uh, forward to be getting and now i got one it usually goes pretty late so it's uh, not a surprise you get this at pick number seven. Okay, I'll take the veteran. I have a chance to get to Descent 4, and even without that, it's a fairly okay size creature. I have no 5 mana place, so I can I can afford having this, and I like it more than the Nover here. How many black cards that is? Oh, not a lot, but still enough to make it make it like a, you know, play enough black sources to guarantee get, hitting them two or three drops uh, with reasonable likelihood all right skull caps and nails not the stomper offering gnome i don't know i guess i'll take this nail now and i can take a hidden necropolis out of this bunch and i can okay i still get the option between these two am i still gonna how many dinos that's oh, it's still four so i suppose i'll just take the river herald guide once again i don't think this is the card i want to be running nope let's take the guide and what else am I gonna get here? Nothing particularly amazing here, so... <laughs> wow, there's a River Herald Scout. Still going there, but I also King Color for me, so... Let's take that. Mm, it's not an Explorer's Cash deck, I'm pretty sure, so let's put that to the sideboard. Mm, Alright. Let's cut some stuff I just don't think I want to have here at all. Mm, companion, very treasure. Seeker of Sunlight. Well, that was the first round of cuts. I have 18 creatures. Uh, runaway Boulder, a sideboard card. Mm -mm -mm. I don't need all these three drops necessarily. How interested in the Phantom I have? So let's see the kind of payoffs for descending uh there are a couple of capybaras there's the skull taker that's three mm, this is the fourth one and this is kind of the fifth one but this is not maybe that i mean it's a good payoff to get those counters but um, it's still it's not such a big difference as for capybara being a four three or a one three which is huge difference of course so i do have some you know reason to to self mill how many instant sorceries five instants can i cut them okay a couple of staggering sizes of course are here and, and then two of the instants are in the presence of ages and the another chance which you know do also mill me so they do have some contribution to to descent without you know despite the fact that as cards they don't don't contribute to that you know being non-permanent so um okay my two drops are very low though i mean i didn't even realize until now that uh yeah i, I saw a couple of those black two drops that have the doesn't four plus one plus one and lifelink but they were early in the packs and i picked something better over them and none of them came back to me Black is definitely not to open color in this draft because I have only nine black cards. 
I could have just maybe sticked to blue and green and still have these good blue cards and whatever I passed once I had locked into black and green, but it's of course too late to worry about that right now. So, this is 18 creatures. I think I'm gonna cut some of the creatures. It'll be something like the Interpresence of Ages is a little bit of an unnecessary card here. I don't quite have the, you know, the, the, I mean, this deck is not, not that much of a decent deck. And then this is now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three drops. I mean, mana curve wise, I should just be cutting a three drop here still. Whichever it's gonna be, like there another chance could be. It. Although I, I might be, I like actually returning some of this good stuff here. The hot late game, higher impact cards. And I kind of want to play the Screaming Phantom. I do have the double Cabibara, which are, uh, you know, a significant reason to want to get to Descent 4. But then again, what's the cut? I'm, I think I will be playing 16 lands and the Nurturing Bristleback as my kind of 17th land. Also, the Poison Dart Frog can help me. Uh, with casting my spells. I'm not going to cut any of these expensive cards, any any of these stuff that costs more than three because I don't actually have so many of them in the deck. And I want to keep the, all the early drops I have. This is kind of a not an early drop though. It can be a two drop in a pinch of course. Um, yeah, these four creatures on turn two, but also a couple of tithing blades on turn two and the dead weight. So I think this is like barely enough early place. It's not like my sideboard has any good early place. The Seeker of Sunlight being just one one unless you sink three additional mana. Uh, it's not really a high impact card. All right, so I guess I can. Now, I do like this Skull Taker a little bit now because I do have some means to, you know, self mill or just like cycle this thing and I can pick one counter. Okay, am I going to just cut a River Herald guide or maybe the Kin Color? I like the Kin Color also because it does, you know, help this thing attack without getting the stun counter. So I guess I'm just cutting one of the River Herald guides. I, I keep this here. And that's it 17 creatures, 7 non creatures. And then I'll add the lands, a few of these. Uh, discover lands. That means I shouldn't be having too much trouble with um, flooding out. I have a bunch of lands I can sacrifice for effect. Yeah, it's not the greatest deck. Uh, black wasn't open enough, but um, yeah, you could have gone many, many ways, uh, many routes in that draft. Uh, just sticking to blue white, especially after picking the last list, would have been a totally reasonable option. But uh, I want to mention that I, I kind of want to draft a little bit of a different colors than my uh, previous drafts have, you know, featured. I had about three red white uh, drafts and was there a blue red draft there or blue white draft? I mean, a lot of those uh, just sky color combination drafts. So now I at least have this black green, which is totally different from my from my uh, other other um drafts that I have recently had on the, on the channel. I will play 9 green, 7 black here. Although I dis this gets me green, that, but mostly because I have such a, you know, there's like a disparity between the colors 9 and 15. And the frog does tap for black, of course, but this also often gets killed when it's on the battlefield early in the game, especially when the opponent sees that I don't have my second color lands available. Uh, but I do think I still prefer having all these green cards. Uh, I mean, cre nine green sources to make sure that I always have the green mana. I could see having a starting hands without black cards or only like one black card and then only forests. And I could see keeping that. But I always have to have access to green. So despite this thing getting me a forest if I need it, I still like this better. So... um. 
Well, that's it, I suppose. That is the, that is the main deck. Okay, that's a nice hand. Oh, I can have a roaming throne on turn three here if the frog survives. And I would just say dino though for this thing. Uh, I didn't actually check what all kind of uh, triggers I have. I have a couple of, well, oh no, one explorer. That's a Mephalk scout. But given that I have the cavern stumper here, I can get his cry two twice. So, unless I draw something different, I will be saying, saying I die not at this thing. I do hope the frog will survive, because I might not have a turn 3 play otherwise. Okay, it will. So I can make that thing into a 1-4. That's not bad for me. Um, dinosaur it is. And now, if the frog survives, I can play the way turn on turn 4. Okay, they have no attacks. Oh. So, thing is, if I attack, they will double block easily with the envoy. And the gnome. And then I have to use either join the dead or the staggering size. Which I don't like. Yeah, I will just play the 5 drop now. Now that's a bunch of big creatures they need to deal with and I have these tricks available too. So unless they have like multiple petrify, they'll be in trouble. Um, well, of course I have a lot more power than they do, so the raising is not a good... Or at least not easy for them right now. Even if they get like a flyer, I will be starting attacks here. Now, if I do draw an untapped land and the frog survives this turn, I am pretty tempted to do the stumper, but of course now it's not necessary. Now, they also have mana up, so this is not that great for me. But I'm still doing the attacks. I have actually mana for both a join the dead and the staggering size. Uh, I do want to start doing some attacks here though, so they, they will probably just double block them. Okay, they go for that. That's actually good, that means they can't have a... That means they can't have a... The cosmic, what's the blast? Or the, the, the trap that deals 5 to a tapped creature, because this thing has ward 2. So now I'm if I'm just using a staggering size, they can only target this with a 1 mana spell. And I can't really see what this what could be. Now what they can have is a plus 2, plus 0 oh, and first strike to one of their guys. But if this has 7 toughness... Yeah, I'm gonna save the Join the Dead for later. I'm just going to do like this. See what happens. I wanted to tap the frog for mana so that I always have. Oh, but that's... I, I guess that's kind of... Yeah, they can kill this. Now, if I chose to use the, the other one, I could have now replied light with the, you know, the... responded with the staggering size, but this is fine still. I mean, yeah, I, I lost that thing. It's not so great, but they also you know, have not much of a board presence. They get to draw the card from the gnome, and then they can make this into a 5-5, but actually I do have the join the dead still here. Uh, it's a little bit of a tell that I have this mana up. That I'm gonna have a join the dead. And uh, I think I'll just kill that thing because that will become annoying. And now... Just deal with that and have I have this big thing and another big thing coming. Even I even get the double scry now. So scry two twice. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, wow, kind of wasted another scribe because I do want to 
you know, draw both of these. Because the phantom might be just, I mean, it is a flyer. I could see maybe not keeping the phantom though. Okay, because I have the, another scry and this thing has an explore, which will be doubled too. Okay, I'm gonna scry it only one to top and see what the, what is behind it. Um, well, I like that too. So I'm gonna keep the dino on top. It will get the double explore, of course, as if the roaming throne will survive this turn. Petrifying there, fine. And now I will just do this. And then I will explore at least... Hmm, I, this will be a 6-5 if I... Oh, I'm gonna leave it on top. So now I get now I get another counter and... I, I also think I want to get the guide. Hmm, it might be a little bit... Awkward though. Actually, change of plans. It can become just a 3-1 and it's not so good here. So I'm gonna mill it, but I wanted to keep it on top to guarantee this has the, another counter coming up. And now I, I'm also maybe just trading the throne with the envoy here. Uh, because they can start making some tokens. I think this is fine. I mean, it will cost 5 mana, but I also want to have a, make them, you know, have not, not much of a board presence. Uh, for my 6-5. Now they can make this into a 5-5 uh, crew one vehicle though. So I think I'm gonna have to wait before attacks. But I kinda didn't want them to have this token making thing around. Uh, well with the Deep Goblin Skull Taker I actually am going to offer the trade here. They can use the Aspirant to crew that thing. I can actually attack with the frog too. Yeah. I can deal extra one. So I'll get to have this 3-3 three, three menace guy now because that permanent will be going to my graveyard and I can pick up a counter here and then I can pick up another counter with the mines of spider unless I happen to Meal, you know, two, <laughs> two instants, which is possible with this deck. I still have a few instants left. I guess I have only two left. Anyway, not very likely. Uh, I don't need the frog anymore that much, so I'm gonna offer it a trade. Although, maybe not, because I'm gonna get the spider. Okay, let's not offer it a trade yet. I can also use the Hidden Necropolis for, for triggering this menace. Uh, I mean, it doesn't. Not menace. Um, sure. Okay, a couple of permanents went there. Mm -mm. I'm gonna play the land. But they have their Hidden Volcano, which they can crack if that's the only left for their they get a 2-2 two, two and my menace guy will be also I can attack with the 3-4 that's nice okay capybara will be good I'm offering the trade also with the poison dart frog that will allow me to get yet another decent trigger and then I can use the necropolis on the next turn because I'm gonna play the Cabibara on this turn regardless. And I'm not gonna play around any mass removal. This is. I wanna pressure them a lot, so. This should be. I should be good to go now, unless they get something amazing. Go for the scries, they scry at the bottom, and uh, I mean, I might as well let them use their trick there. I don't need to care about the capybara that much. That's not even gonna pick anything from me, and they still lost their guy. Fine. Okay, now they are forced to jump block. 
And I think I could use the another chance, but I, I think I'll just... um. I mean, I don't have to do anything. I'm gonna win on the next turn. But I'm gonna crack this thing regardless. And they might find the one white mass removal effect. They pick a two power, you know, creature. It's the cliff bridge from each player and the rest will get destroyed. And of course I had no two power creatures here, but that's just one top deck for them. They, this is not very likely that they have that particular rare in their deck. So I wasn't gonna put this to my hand because I could have done with the uh, discover. Of course, you can choose to put the card in your hand always. All right, now red and white. Do I have any artifacts or no? No, this doesn't even destroy enchantments. Do I have any artifacts in the deck? Three, roaming throne. Couple of Tithing Blades. Well, it's not such a big deal if they kill the Tithing Blade. Roaming Throne is annoying, but I, I'm not gonna cut this card. Anything here requires my me to play, you know, something cheaper here. Well, I don't actually have that many expensive cards. What happened? <laughs> I was just wanting to move this in here, but all right. So. There's not really much in the sideboard that would help here, so I'm just gonna not do any sideboarding. Well, my one of rock is here again with both colors available. That's a very nice hand I have here. Even if the frog gets dealt with, I have a place available. Akawali into Axto into this on turn 5 perhaps. In case the frog dies, if the frog survives, I will just Axto of course on the turn 3 then. <clears throat> okay, I'm taking 2 here. No two drop there, all right. Axe I don't mind if it's a land or a spell, both are fine options here. Spider? Yeah, I'm gonna keep it on top. It's a good blocker if they happen to have a flyer, and of course I want to meal a couple of cards to power up this Akawali. They have a Petrify. They can ping me once and also get this cry now thanks to this little synergy these things have so now rather than play the spelunker i think i'll just do the spider for now it's good enough in blocking i can make this you know even to have an even higher uh good attack for one i'm never gonna block with this thing so why not uh you know this could be x equals something huge. Alright, so I need my removal here. Because they will be able to, with the Sunset Militia and the Altisar, they keep dealing damage to me, despite me having the blocker available. And they have also this cry every turn, which is very, very good for them. But let's see if I can find something. Well, the Hammer Skull is a very good start. Now... I'm just gonna go for the Scry 2 now, of course, it's better use of my mana, I would say. Bristleback, I can actually play on the turn after. Huh. Well, I'm gonna maybe draw the forest, or I could draw the Bristleback and then, you know, explore on the next turn, I get to draw the forest too. Yeah, that actually makes more sense, I would say. I'm gonna keep them both. And now I just need to kind of outrace. Oh, well that's a problem. I mean, that's that's just game, uh, game is over. 
They have this huge size creature now. Yeah, this is not good. Yeah, this is... This is just not gonna work. Well, I have to try. <laughs> I have to try, but I don't like this anymore at all. Right, well, I'm gonna attack for 7. That's the only way I can... I, mean, I need to somehow deal damage and they, they need to make some mistakes. I have no kill spells or anything. So, here I will just... Uh, X equals 5 here. I need to dig into my answers. If I even have any good answer here, I don't know if that's the case. I don't need that. Staggering size is good, but they will be knowing about it. Um, they will be knowing about it. Guess that's. Guess that's fine. Like, I'm gonna keep it. Don't like it, but I'm gonna keep it. I will have to block the six six here. If they attack, they will. They can attack. You know, tap for a bunch of their things. That is a lot of things to tap though, and I have the trample giving trick. I mean, this is a 10 power trample, this is 8 power trample, so they cannot just leave, you know, one blocker. Yeah, they, they didn't really... They didn't have the opportunity to, to transform this thing, but the problem is the 8-8 eight, eight here, of course. It's a huge, huge creature. Okay, no moving around the equipment. I think they should consider it at least. Yeah, they are. They are doing. It. No, they are actually. Are you telling me there's a chance? They are tapping a lot of their guys. They have to be a little bit careful about it. Anyway, I have now seven mana, so I can play the staggering size. And one of these things, not all of them. Um, I can just play the bristle back. I could make this guy, you know, not being able to be blocked by the Aspirant, but I don't think that's the way to go here. So I'm thinking about attacking with the Spelunker here. Then if they block with that 8-8, eight, eight, I can still use the Staggering Size. I kind of want to just play the Akawali and the Hammer Skull, though. So, let's see how they do. I'm, I'm under a clock here. They can I, go, I go to 7. I think I need to pressure them quite a bit here. So, I'm in fact going to do this. I'm going to just have to staggering size the Spelunker now. Okay, they did that, which is... Oh, they know about the staggering size. All right, this is a little odd, but I'm also very happy they chose to do it that way. I guess they wanted just me to use that thing. But now they have some... This will be a 5-5 trample quite easily, actually. Hmm, Hammer Skull is... I, mean, I can just cycle this to make this into a 5-5 Trample on the next turn. I still think I'd rather... Well, no, actually... Okay, I'm gonna just do this. And I think I will consider cycling the Brizzle back so that they don't, I don't want to let them know about it yet. But is this like lethal? I didn't, of course, check if they can just ping me to death. I don't think they can. Another militia isn't gonna help. This is bug. Like they can make me go to 5, 4, 3, 2. They can, they can make me to go to 2, but of course they would lose to my attack then. 
All right, so the fact they weren't able to tap five things to, to make this smithy into a land that pro keeps producing those annoying uh, huge creatures, that's why I'm having some chance in here. Now, now I am going to lose, I think, on their next turn, so I'm going to cycle this just to because I'm not going to cast that thing on the next turn, no matter what. Oh, Tithing Blade. Oh. Well, if I do it pre-combat, they can just sack the Sunset Militia. But I guess they always can just sack the Sunset Militia, no matter when I do it. Okay. I... If I attack with everything... They have to block the 5-5, five, five, the 5-5, five, five, and the 7-7. Seven, seven. I can make this only being blockable by the... Okay, how much mana I have? 1, 2, 3, 7, 8. So, yeah, this is 9, and then sadly this is... I mean, 9 with the Cavern Stomper activation. I guess the Tithing Blade just isn't gonna happen now. I'm, I'm going to, in fact, just attack here, here, here. If I attack with the Spider, they have the option to put the Altisar there for free, and then they can still block the 7-7 seven, seven with the 3-3. Three, three. And then they would have to jump block these two, and this Tramble wouldn't be enough. So I think I can't attack with the Spider. I'd rather have, have them block with that thing. Yeah. So, the problem is the Altisara survives now and I will lose the game. I don't know, if I if I forced an attack with everything, would that make a difference there? I guess if they block, I mean, they have to block with the Sunset Militia and then they have to sacrifice. Okay, well, I don't... As long as both the Militias die, or if the Altisara dies. And, they, and, and both of the Militias will die if them. Okay, are they not gonna block with the Sunscribe? Well, let's see how they block. Maybe I was supposed to attack with the Spider. Because then they were... Okay, well, I like this. Now they will have to sack the Militia. And I'm not gonna die on their turn. Anyway, not much going on in here. I will trample up two points over. And... Um, yeah, they have only those two and then they will sack one of them. Otherwise, I run the risk of losing. But yeah. This actually should be... Quite easy for me now. I mean, they, they need to draw something huge. Because they have only one creature and I have... A, you know, one, two, three, four lethal creatures myself. And they can't beat me. Alright, that's it. This wasn't the end of the world. I don't know if they had an opportunity to go for the tap out turn. Because once they start getting more of those tokens, which I was able to deal with thanks to my staggering size. I think it, that was also a weird block with the thing. They knew that I can make this into a 10 10 tremble. And they blocked with their 8 8. But anyway, I'm happy that <laughs> I did not lose despite them having this smoothie here. Okay, there's no frog, no green mana. Yeah, this is not the hand I can keep. If this was all forests, I think I would keep in that case. But here it's gonna be a mulligan. Well, there's the frog now, which can help me cast the black things. Mm. I'll have to put one of these cards on the bottom of my deck, of course. I uh, could be one of the black cards, but I kind of want to keep them thanks to the frog. So it's going to be in between the staggering size and the stomper. And I think I'd probably have the stomper. I, of course, need a mo more mana, but uh, I think oh, that's not... Well, that's actually 
it would have been fine if I could now just play the Titan Blade, but now if they have another creature or they kill the frog, this thing survives and it's gonna be really difficult. It is really difficult now. I, I can still draw another removal spell, of course, but... Even actually, not that they have this thing to sack. I'm, I'm actually just gonna go for the explore rather than, rather than you know, the kill spell here. It will take some time for them to get this thing going, and uh, I can try to outrace them. But if they kill the frog, that will be a problem. Okay, they had nothing. Mm, I think I just. Keep hitting. I don't know, maybe I should do this too. Although there's nothing that cares about having stuff in my graveyard. I think the kin color giving me a bigger creature. That maybe makes sense. Okay, let's do this, and I will show the axe jaw to them. Or maybe I'll show the stomper to them because that's less likely to even be cast. All right, I'm gonna show it to them. And now, I hope just they don't have a Tinker's Toad. Then the Titan Blade would become ridiculously uh, inefficient. <laughs> I guess the Toad's tokens, well, that's also... I guess I'm gonna hope that they will be blocking with the 1-1. One, one. Uh, they can start doing this thing, but it, it's three untapped things. It's not that easy. All right, so they, I think the Cloud God has to choose to block now. Definitely. So let's see how that goes. They are not taking seven here. So Spelunker could explore twice and I th think it's kinda gonna have to happen so that I can just get my lands. There's a land and there's a non-land. I just need to <laughs> swamp here at some point. I guess the axe so it can be cast now. Uh, but yeah, the Warden of the Inner Sky, I need my one removal spell for it. This will be coming a flyer too. Yeah, I don't like that they had this thing. Yeah, my mana issues combined with the Warden of the Inner Sky. If I had like a regular curve out with these kind of spells, I think I could have applied a little bit more pressure. But now... Well, I have like one answer to this thing. It's the minus five, minus five, of course. Uh, frog gonna go away? No, they just want to take less damage. Copper rock the sunburn, all right. Well, I guess my Titan Blade can be used now. Sadly, I have only one black mana, so... I could have played the Phantom and the Titan Blade here, but now, of course, I mean, I'm not beating the Sunborn. Let's go to the next game. Uh, this is impossible to win when they have the Warden and the Sunborn, and I have no good. You know, I can play this thing, but it's just uh, not gonna help here when they have all that stuff going on, and my offense just died there. All right, another red white deck, and like like in the previous match, I don't think there's any think great to sideboard here so let's just have the same one mm, I guess I have both colors I need one more land to play the hammer skull and I have a slow start here but uh, I'm not going to not going to uh, mulligan this hand it's too good if it works, especially because I can, you know, maybe even go Hammer Skull into the uh, uh, Dino so that this can uh, attack without the stun counter here. But first things first, I need to draw a land. One more land in two draw steps, ideally, or just a frog. <laughs> Although the frog would be a slow, slow one. Okay, come on, untapped land. That is the frog though, but now, uh, do they have a second drop? Yes, they do. I hate it. <laughs> Kellan. Oh, come on. <sighs> well, they have some good cards in their deck for sure. 
Well, now I need to draw something for the hammer skull. I'm actually even prefer that they chose to get rid of the ha warden than the Kellan because if I get a, f a blocker for this thing and I can get a blocker for it, uh, that's all the value they can get out of this thing. But they might. Let's see how many cards they're gonna get. Okay, they have a fast start. Do they get the free spell? They get the free meal if they want to. If they don't care about the planes, they don't. Okay, come on, on top land. Thank you. So I'm still definitely in the game, but if they have a petrify on this thing, I'll take six at least, and then I will have only one blocker at most coming up. I can block that thing with the frog. Sadly, I cannot push with the hammer skull now because... Oh, please don't petrify it. <laughs> uh, I can't push with this thing. I, I can say this is a dino. That's annoying. Well, they have all their stuff up. Well, I can't even cast this now because I didn't draw another land here. But yeah, I mean, I can't just attack with this thing and then take all this damage. No, I have no much option. I'm gonna take the land mana producer here. So, they can make this into a 3-3. Three, three. But I suppose I can take that a few times. But I'm on my back foot here. Now, if they happen to like flood out a little bit, there's a chance. And of course, the poison dart frog can block the bat once I have the two mana. I can't do it right now. I mean, of course, I can always block, but I also need the death touch for it. I suppose to join the dead, you know, will deal with this thing too. But I would really like to attack with the hammer skull, not leave it as a blocker. But since I'm so behind in the damage race, it's not really an option here. So why are they thinking about the l Ruined Lurker Bat? I mean, I don't have the... This has summoning sickness, so I cannot give it death touch. So of course I'm gonna not block the Bat here. And even if I was gonna block, they would be happy about that. Another Tomb Raider, alright. I have a difficulty drawing the land here. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I'm gonna play the roaming throne now, so that I can get double explode out of this thing. But I just can't attack. This is way too many attackers to deal damage to me. So I go now, now the, down to 9 and then I will go down to 6. Well, I can use the Join the Dead or I can use the Poison Dot Frog and Death Touch combination to deal with it. Well, they just drew a pretty good card in there. Hmm. Now they can push through every... to uh, push with everything. They get a kill and trigger, they get this thing. I really needed them to not draw a removal spell on my big things, but what can you do? They had a pretty darn good start here, and of course I struggled in both games, so uh, I don't need to you know, worry about it too much. So I go down to uh, 3 here, and they have this guy for, for, as a free draw, and they get to you know scry here, of course. Yep. Well, I mean, it's game over. I don't need to waste any time here. That was just too much. Too much and too quickly. Okay. No frog, but this time I have actually three lands in both colors. And I can... Well, if I don't have a turn to play. I can just play the tapped land and then curve out from there on. I don't think I'm gonna... Oh, well, th that's the perfect thing. I mean, I can use my dead weight, which I just drew to kill their very good two and play the tapped land and now it's still very, very, you know, tem tempo-wise, it's totally great. And yeah, I'm not going to cycle this unless I'm hitting a very, very big strike of uh, non lads. Tithing Blade deals with my Akawali. 
and but I can continue with more stuff. No, well, that's annoying for sure, but I guess I can use the staggering size here. They're gonna discover into three, there's nothing I can do about it, but do I want to save my axe so I can make it into seven, six, trample over five damage and have this thing left still? And I can play this one also, thanks to the forest. Yeah, I'm gonna use the staggering size to push five damage through and, and let my 4-3 survive in here. I don't get the doesn't trigger of course now but but I think it's better to have this this kind of a setup here. I do have the join the dead here still. Bitter triumph. Well I mean they choose not to even use it which is I mean now they have to use two more mana for it. And I'm of course not gonna play any anything bigger than this board I already have here. Unless I'm really just forced to do that. Monstrosaur will die. Another chance is great. Well, I do like my chances now. They go down to 9. I'm really surprised they chose not to use the bitter triumph to just deal with the axe jaw there. Dead weight there, I can't do much about it, but I have the another chance re returning me or some pretty good stuff here. And now they're gonna rock slide that. Of course, if I just draw land, and these are all the tapped lands, I can just play my bristle back. And if not, I can use this thing and get back my get back my skull taker, and uh, I guess the Akawali is the better one. They have a, this, I mean, they're gonna kill one of these and then I can play the next one. I think I like the Akawali more than the other options, so let's take the Akawali. And this will get a counter. They are pretty much forced to use the removal on it. They chose not to. Well, they know about the Akawali, but it's still not... Um, are they gonna take three damage multiple times here? That's barely gonna matter. Well, that's gonna be the bristle back then. Regardless of the, if them using the removal or not. Okay, they waited for this card thing so that they didn't have to pay the life for it. But here, let's just do this. And there they have this drain life thing but I can actually have my own one and it's not like it's gonna matter here well that's that's a fairly annoying card for them to get here but oh uh, I have a 5-5 trampler I'm going to get rid of the tithing blade I have all these discoverers left from the lands too they can make their snail into a 3-3 uh, but it's just gonna trade with my 3-3 three, three and uh, they will still take 5 and I have uh, two 5-5s five now. Yeah, I don't quite have the... I'm gonna play the land if they have more discard effects or exile from hand effects. Yep. Mm. Right. So black and red. At least not yet another white-based aggressive deck or a blue-red aggro um, monstrosaur. They have the Nover, which is gonna trade with my big things. Not much I can do about it. They have a bunch of removal. They have the hand hate. I wonder if I'm supposed to... How am I supposed to react to that deck? I'm gonna play all the expensive stuff. Is there something that's just not good? Screaming Phantom can eat a dead weight. Don't like that. I mean, my three mana card dying to there. One mana card. That said, I have, you know, also the 
skull taker and the guide that can die to it. I think the 2-2 two, two flyer is good enough. I could maybe see not playing my own snail. Although the snail is also good for their for their you know tithing blade and making them exile stuff from their hand. Maybe they are holding like removal or something can be good. In the end, I think I might not care about any changes. I could take the boulder because that will be able to also pick off the monstrous or or I can just cycle it if I want to. But what, I mean, the cuts here, they are just some... Um, I don't want to cut anything. Maybe the screaming phantom could be cut. Mm -hmm. Nah, I don't think so. I'll I'll have creatures that can brawl with the monstrous or. Mm, mono swamp or black producing lands only here. One of these being a forest would be really good start for me, but the opponent mulligans, I will have to mulligan too. I'm not gonna keep that. What? I have nine forests in the deck and the one forest cycler. Well, I'm keeping this because I have my two and three drops here and I don't need to have like the staggering size. I, I will still know. I know that this is very late game thing, but I, I like it more than the staggering size here. I think the, if I'm gonna win this game, the game is gonna go pretty late, and uh, then this will be mattering. Okay, there's a hidden courtyard, so they are not just black red. That is a white producing land. They got rid of the monster sword. Okay, that's actually a very good one for me. Hmm. In fact, I'm not getting my green mana is not so good, but the hammer skull is a good draw, and I still can play a play a three drop here. So now, if I get any land, well, I guess I can get one of the two green. Um, no, no, I think I have a two hidden necropolis and one one cape from green. That, you know, I understand, but well, this is kind of awkward. I, I drew all these green cards because I have most the green cards. <laughs> okay. Mill the forest and let's see if I can draw another one. Or at least just a black castable card. They're gonna go for this. They can discard a permanent card to make this trigger happen. I take five. Not gonna block a trampler here. And this has menace, of course. Come on. Oof. That is very, very bad. And that was a good draw, but. Well, I mean, non game. Well, I guess they have two of them. I'm just. In theory, I can still win, of course, but. It's gonna be very difficult. Okay, I can... I can make them exile their final card from their hand. I'll mill two here. Look at this forest. <laughs> Again, milled. Well, it's not such a small chance when they reach the forest. Now... Yes, this is good. I'm gonna make them exile whatever they have in there. And it was... A bitter triumph. And then I can play my frog, and then I have to take still more damage here. I am going to take, what, 6 damage from the volcano and the vents uh, here. I'm going down to 5. I will lose the titan blade in that case. Well, they can't attack with the uh, vents. Alright, and of course my snail is a very good blocker on the Necromage. So that's that. But I have it like a 7 turns. 
I have a 6-6 against this volcano thing. Um, can I choose to attack? I would like to, but I need to block these one ones. Well, I'm gonna do this regardless. I guess I could have the guide, but I like the 5-5 five, five more. So now, I don't think I have the looks order to attack here because they can also attack with the menace guy. I need to make it so that it's not easy for them at all to... Ah, oh, that's nasty. Yeah, that's nasty. Oh boy. Oh, they should attack with the one ones, I think. They're gonna discard a permanent, so this trigger will happen, and of course I will make this block and this block. I will go down to five, and I can't take three here. So what I'm going to do, I have to discard a card or sacrifice a land. Or sacrifice a creature, but I don't know if I want to sacrifice. I guess I could discard the cavern stomper, but it's actually <laughs> just a very good one here. I'm gonna discard the river herald guide. And now I can just uh, play this thing. Sky once. Oh, I will mill a card if I attack with the flyer, but I don't know if I can do that. They don't have the menace attacker anymore, of course. But I also like both of these things. So next turn. Um, I want to draw the staggering size first. And I'm not going to attack, of course, because I would have to mill it. Now I have a dino here, so if I attack with the hammer skull, they might block with the Zoyova. That's it. I don't mind if they block with the Zoyova. Okay, they actually trade with the child of the volcano instead. It is understandable thanks to me having the cavern stomper that can eat the child. Mm, okay. Guess I don't need the menace guy that much. But yeah, the sepulcher is <laughs> that is threatening. Oh, that's the uh, splash they have. Well, you know the cavern stomper could be made so that it can't be even blocked, but I also can make it into a 10 power trample. I can actually attack for a lot here. Two in there, so they are guaranteed to be at 12. Oh. So do I just win unless they make a really unreasonable block? They don't know about the staggering size. I think I do this. Sadly, this didn't become a 7-7, seven, seven, but... I mean, they can't block this at all. They are going down to 5, and then this is 5 trample, but they, I also have... Okay, so they actually make it like this. So this does mean that... They are not going to die to the staggering size, but they also lose, like, they're going to lose on the next turn. If I pump this guy, it's going to be 12 total. This doesn't trample at all, because there's, there's 6 toughness, so I'm going to lose my Akawali because they, of course, um, you know, have a death toucher here, but I can kill all of these. This is going to trample over... A couple of points even. Yeah. Doesn't matter how I do this. So now they lose 
everything. I guess if they can find a pump spell for this, which I cannot block now. Well, they would have to find it right now, top decking a pump spell. Wow. They actually did it. Um, That was very unlikely. Now, it wasn't the only card, of course. They could have had a... Well, well I mean, that was still... <laughs> oh, boy. I was like a 90% sure I'm gonna win. Because, yeah, they could have had a haster, they could have had... Burn to face, there's the, you know, the flash artifact that deals two to any target as an ETB. So there were things that could have helped work beyond this thing, but this feels like a ridiculous thing. Because I managed to actually <laughs> survive here quite nicely, but hey, it was a non-game start, but I almost won, but they had the nice top deck there. Alright, let's hope that the final game won't be a non-game then. Mm, it's good enough. I have a 3-drop into 4-drop. Unless I have to exile something. But now I have... If they have a Skull Caps Nail, I can exile a land here. Before even considering exiling the Staggering Size. Well, now it's definitely gonna be a land if... If they make me exile. Under Cliff. Um, yep, just do this. I'll exhale my swamp here. Not gonna block here. They chose not to discard, so they like their hand. That's not necessarily good news for me. I will mill first and then I will explore. It would be a mistake to do it the other way around. Okay, I don't mind milling a land that I didn't exactly need. Mm, Cabibara is better off being in the graveyard. Now, do they have a bitter triumph on the axe, Joe? Dead weight on the phantom, alright. And Acolyte of Aklasas. That's not so great. Um, I guess I'm just killing the Vandercliff here. Well, I have a staggering size, so if they do a block with everything, I would, of course, be very happy about it. I don't mind that at all. Do this before they can untap with this pin. You know, usable. And, uh... Well, if they don't have a removal of the axe jaw, it's gonna attack for a lot of damage thanks to the staggering size offering. Okay, that's actually annoying. Uh, I care about my graveyard. But I suppose the spider was a decent enough. Draw there. So whenever this thing attacks, they can exile a card from my graveyard. But I'm gonna mill a couple of more cards to make it so that if I draw some of my decent stuff, well, there's some. I still am at decent four. And now, if, do I want to use the staggering size or not? If they do this, uh, this restless vents, um, I don't think I do use it though. I, I think I liked it more as a as a uh, aggressive effect. I'm gonna just let these bounce off each other. Okay then. Hmm, don't like this too much. I'm gonna go with this just to gain my life here. Now they can make a double block. And I lose two cards and they lose one. But I think it has to happen. I think it has to happen. 
Oh, they do it that way. Well, I mean, I don't mind this. No, I, my, my axe will survive here. But I guess they could have gone for doubles there. Play around that thing. They even could have used the Aklazots because this trample would have done a lot more damage to them. I think blade, well, I mean, let's get rid of the King Collar, which is not gonna block the Wandercliff. No matter what, they can make this, but I'm also dealing 5 to them. I have the Hidden Necropolis in here. Let's see if I can hit something good with this, now that they left the blocker. That is a very good one. <laughs> that was exactly what I needed. So now they don't have a good double block available at all. And I can make my own, you know, my own sepulchre so they kind of cancel out in that case. Uh, they can have a skullcap snail, so I'm just gonna play a forest here. There's no reason for me to keep lands in my hand. There's no rummaging or looting here. Not for these colors. That's just a 2-2, but they can... Oh, well that was a lucky one. <laughs> uh, let's attack with both. They do have a Restless Vents though, but I'm, I'm still gonna attack with the, both, of the, both of these. And if they do choose to you know, double block that, it's gonna be pretty bad for them. Okay, I think... At least I hope they're not going to find another great top deck here. But now one pump spell isn't gonna be enough. That's definitely not gonna be enough. I had some good top decks here for sure, but that's what I deserve after they did that. Well, there's a pretty good top deck for them, but that actually is not gonna be that amazing. Given that... Um, um, this token does just jump block these guys. But I actually do have to... I was considering attacking both to, uh, you know, into them. They would go to one and then you know, to block the axe so but I actually don't want them to have a 5 loyalty on this thing. I do have to do it like this and and this, yeah, that's right. They might choose to, well, I don't mind if they choose to let it go. I think they want to keep making those tokens. And here it's gonna be my own titan blade or a sepulcher. Um, Baskin Capybara is the least important one. So now the Sepulters do cancel out. Um, they have this drain effect here. Okay, the Quinteros can't. That was pretty good one. Alright, so they, I think, have just a land in hand. So they're gonna rummage that guy away. Yep, and they have now three mana left. Is that gonna do anything? They... Huh... They weren't gonna lose yet. They could have plussed this thing. And then they go to 4 in my upkeep. And then I guess... I guess they drew another land and weren't interested in, in continuing. Of course, I had a huge advantage in here. But then again, if they just find an answer for the extra and I draw a few lands in a row, they could have actually turned the game with the Quinteros count. My next turn would have been attack in the count with both my guys, just to make sure it goes away. And then they would have saved the 3 too. Well, I don't know. Depends on what I draw. That was it anyway. Okay, well, at least something a little bit different. Not, not white, red, white, blue or blue, red all the time. Um, the deck it wasn't even maybe that good. I wanted black to be a little bit more open, have a little bit more early game, but um, and I never really, I don't think I get that much use out of this thing. Um, but hey, two match wins out of three, I think for this deck it's a perfectly um, nice result. Could have been worse as well and um, and the one well the one match I lost I think that was a little bit of a bad RNG but um, then again I had some good draws in the third match so I think it all balances out. Uh, the 
probably will be like a couple of more of LCI drafts uh, between some cube drafts perhaps before the next set but um yeah this wasn't the last of my LCIs but it's gonna be very close close to the uh, end of this uh, set's drafts but I will see you in the next video whatever it may be thank you for watching and bye bye